Hello everybody and welcome to Tom's chat room. Uh yeah, we're back in we're back in the chat room, the show that is uh, incredibly irregular. Um if if um this show was a bowel movement, the doctor would want to see you now. But we are um I'm here to I'm here for Tom's chat room. Uh as you guys can tell, I'm a little bit less um a little bit less dramatic and over the top this time and that's uh and that's because today we today we're doing a, something different in the chat room. We're doing things a bit differently. We're um, we're taking things a bit more seriously this time. Um, uh, I must sort of disclaimer before I start before this show gets um, gets into gets into its stride. Um, we're going to be discussing me and my guest. We are going to be discussing addiction and the fallout of said addictions. And uh, that manner of things, uh, especially relating um, to alcohol. So if that's something that you don't feel you want to listen to, uh, I fully appreciate. Uh, I fully appreciate that, and just post something in the comments to let me know you were here, and I can fully understand if you listen no longer. But to that. Um, and now to those of you who are left watching, um, I, it's about time I introduce my guest on the, um, on, on the, on the, the bouncy dodgy Skype line. Um, I'm joined by, um, a, a person who I've been friends with for, how long would you say, dude? Uh, a decade? Over that, I reckon. Well over a decade? Um. Yeah, you and I was about eight. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> and, um. Uh, we're here, um, so I'm, I'm joined by, by my good by my good friend CJ Fulmar. We're talking about um, his upcoming, uh, well, his in production at the moment sequel documentary. But in o in order to talk about that, I think we need to go into the first documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Man. Um, the first documentary, obviously, you made uh, about two years ago. Um, I mean, it, it was a college project, but it was also personal. It was also quite personal for you. Um, I talk, of course, about uh, consequence. Yep, that's consequence now, for you. For the for the people who haven't seen consequence, one you need to. So pause this and go and watch it. Uh, check the check the description below. Note to self: remember to put that in the description. Um, but. You ought to go and watch it because it's uh well it well I, I watch a lot of documentaries you know I'm I'm a big fan of of documentaries by the likes of Michael Moore uh, Morgan Spurlock uh, people like that and none of their documentaries I find have impacted me the way Consequence did Consequence obviously being the uh, your documentary about what well, your personal situation and some of the some of the less personal elements that you went through with um, your mother's battle with uh, the addiction, her addiction to alcohol. Yeah. So I suppose the first um, thing I want to get into on that subs on that substance is what uh, what made you want to, what made you want to document what was going on in your life at that period. Um. Well, as you said, it was a college project. Um, I just started my BTEC in media production, and our first like large project was to make a documentary. Um, and when I was sort of floating around the other groups that were working, they were doing sort of yeah. Granted, it was a college project, uh, but most of them seemed quite hollow in their stories and stuff like that. It was just like missing pets or graffiti whether it was art or not so yeah granted some people might want to watch that sort of thing but they weren't very deep they were very um like very materialistic or very sort of generic would you say yeah very generic sort of things that you might want to find out but it's not not very personal at all um and whether it's a curse or whether it's a good thing, I've always been quite an open person to talk about my problems. And uh, because I'd been 
living with my mum, who'd been an addict for about six years at this point, um, it was quite, for me, I really, I was happy to sort of delve a bit deeper and sort of tell people that there are others out there doing this and going through this sort of um, experience in their life. I guess that's probably why I sort of brought it up in the initial ideas. Um, and then as we were sort of tracing a few different um, possibilities, we found that it was possible, like it was the most likely to happen and the best one to happen. Uh, because of course, me heading it and presenting it as well as being the main focus point and the main story like involving my life meant that me as a contributor, I could give so much more than you can interview someone in 40 minutes. They had me all the way through pre-production yeah. to sort of bearing themselves and like, like my producer could work out where like where we do need to talk to other people but it became a bit more of a package because I knew quite a lot of stuff myself. Mm. It was just a matter of conveying that to an audience. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> obviously, um, in in the making of that, you weren't the only person focused upon. You did speak to some other, um, some other, pe some other people. So, how did you go about getting uh, interviewees for that? Um, did you just outright phone contact people, or um, d um, how did you go about reaching out to people? Well, when we went into like our expanded idea and we started to work on a proposal and a bit of a pitch and stuff like that, uh, we realised that it would be good to speak to at least one person that had been through it themselves and possibly got out the other end yeah. and also to speak to a professional to get a professional's opinion on like what life is like for people and their families when they're facing these sort of conditions and these... Um, diseases mm. um, so I guess for the person that went through it with us like she's mentioned in the video as Fiona cause she wanted our identity kept hidden as much as possible yeah um, she was a friend of one of my teachers and I had a little chat with her I went up to her and introduced myself explained what I was doing and I was just really delicate with the situation because I didn't know how she felt mm. like it was all it's all well and good me being like part of my sleeve and willing to pour out my whole life story, but others might not be that way inclined. Mm -hmm. So I had to be really delicate. And then I found out she was she's quite a lovely lady and um, she was perfectly up for talking to me a bit. Um, so then that, like, I didn't ask her any questions there and then. I sort of held them all in for the actual interview. And yeah, when we got to the interview, she was really good. She was really descriptive. In fact, like one of the comments, it didn't make it into the video, of course, because it was sort of, uh, it would have been a bit of a tangent from the overall motive of it, yeah. was the fact that when she talks now, I think I think it might be a like a, a way for her to sort of react to the situation. She was quite giggly and quite... Like she looks back and smiles about it because I think that's the way her grief and stuff like that has made her sort of like awkward laugh towards it, yeah. just so she can talk openly. Um, but yeah, she was. I still speak to her now, and she's probably going to be a friend for many years because, like, she went through it when she was like in her late twenties, so a bit older than I was. Mm -hmm. But she did see quite a lot of stuff that I'd seen and she realised that like she's never really spoken to many people before that had been through the similar situation. Yeah. And that also sparked a bit of incentive to make the documentary because it was sort of like it isn't spoken about and I I think it does good to be spoken about. Mm-hmm. And um <clears throat> oh, how did uh, I mean you spoke to a um a doctor of sorts. Um, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what his title was, but you spoke to um, a bloke who gave us gave sort of the medical side of all of this. Um, how did you get hold of that fella? 
Uh, Milan, Milan. He he is um, the manager of the place I interviewed him, which is a. Uh, it's sort of a re- rehabilitation centre, but it more it mostly focuses on um, mental illnesses that are. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Um, mental illnesses that come after the addiction. Mm. So he mentions, um, I, I'm not sure if we made it in the final cut, but uh, he does mention like Korsakoff and stuff like this, which are medical conditions that the alcohol affects your brain. Yeah. But um, he works for Campania Rehabilitation Center, and Campania is a part of the Nutaro group, I believe. And my editor on Consequence. His brother-in-law is Mr. Notaro. Ah. So it is a family friend that happens to own, or like, I'm not sure how it all works out, but I know he is the name on the branding of most of the rehabilitation centres in this sort of area, the western Bristol areas. Hmm. So, um, <clears throat> obviously... Uh, in uh, the way the way the way you sort of the way you put across um, the situation in the in the documentary as as uh, has been said many a time in the comment section of it um, it sort of started out quite uh, quite dark and then it sort of built to a um, to a positive climax where um, it was almost like a happy ending um, was that intentional or did that just sort of is that just how it happened really um totally honestly it was all intentional uh reason being is um subject to not whether i felt good or bad like the documentary was very um cathartic for me like making it and talking about it did help me relieve some of the feelings and the emotions and I got upset a bit in the home videos it didn't matter because it was all about telling the truth and the whole truth yeah and actually opening up and letting people in Mm. um but it was quite an intentional um I wanted it to seem as um positive as possible by the end because if someone had sat down and delegated 13 minutes of their time I didn't want them to watch it thinking, oh, I'm, I'm going through similar experiences as this guy. Oh, this is right. Oh, I've seen this. I've happened. This has happened to me. This has happened to me. Mm. And then get to the end and then there's actually, like, there is nothing they can look forward to. I wanted them to realize that talking and opening up and mm. being there for other people. And even if you if you know your friend's parent is an alcoholic, just ask your friend, like, how are they doing? Like, how are they coping with it? Like, obviously, it's not the best subject to talk about all the time. But I think just talking and opening up and sort of knowing that other people are around that can help you and can support you is nine-tenths of the battle as itself. Um, because community support whether it's like a group or whether it's a friend a family member a counselor um your college your school anything like that they're they're all there to help you you just need to if they don't know what's going on in your life how can they exactly know to come and point their advice towards you and the um i i take it the uh, college were quite supportive when you were making the documentary they were completely behind it every step of the way um, to such an extent that I probably I, I think I had like nine hours worth of footage I had more interviews and more talks with people that didn't make the final cut mm. um, but they were really supportive of me and uh, I think that has helped like if I wasn't at such a good supporting uh, college mm. I think it would have been so easy for me if I if I hadn't got the additional support, then, then I don't think I would have been happy to open up to it. Yeah. Now, obviously, um, <clears throat> post um, since since the making of um, Consequence, um, obviously the happy ending, the the sort of constructed happy ending. Um, 
hit another hit another plunge in the old roller coaster, and that brings us on to the sequel documentary that you're um, that's it, that you're in the planning stages of, where um, you're covering grief. So, uh, how have you how have you coped with the thought of making a grief based documentary? Obviously, knowing what's happened. Um, I wasn't sure how I'm, to word that myself, to be honest. I'm not sure. Um, basically, the reason why that I'm so um, geared up to making it and make uh, making this documentary is again, it hits. Um, it's a uni uh, project to make a documentary, so that sort of spurs me on because then it gives me great time and mm. I, I, I've actually got the equipment to use and things like that um, but mainly it's because with the whole situation I'm not actually sure where I stand on it like yeah. it's quite common to mention the five stages of grief mm -hmm. um, but I look at that scale and I'm just like well I don't think I'm in any of those stages it's been almost a year since my mum's passed away and I, I'm just, I feel almost detached from the whole situation. Yeah. I'm not sure whether that's a coping mechanism. I don't know whether that's me come to terms with it. Mm. So I could be at any stage from one to five, and I, I, I literally don't know. And it makes me wonder, once you go through a tragedy, mm -hmm. whether it's family, friend, relative, whatever, is it as cut and dry as, oh, you're in this stage? Like the book that the theory was first posted in, is um, it does mention that there is no black and white answer. It's, they're all grey areas. Yeah. But that doesn't help the person suffering. Like no. you, you can't turn around and say, oh, yeah, you might be this, you might be that. Because, what? oh, that's well and good, you you put me in a section, well done, like, but I'm a person mm -hmm. and I have things and you see what I mean? Like, it's very, yeah. I, I think it's very important to possibly address. I, th I think it's, I think it's very much a point you can make that everybody goes through it differently. Yeah. No two, no two people, whether they're from the same family, the same race, um, the same, well, you know, the, the same, the same country, the same area. Um, no two people go through things the same way. Um, <clears throat> obviously having a family bereavement myself recently, I, um, I, I know, I know how, I know how it goes. And I, my, my personal approach is detachment to just try and put it, away somewhere you know not try try not to try try to just just to continue you know to just get on with stuff yeah i think i think i and um <laughs> a lot of people would say that was um and that, that, that that's a a negative is i think i just got on with making youtube videos the day i found out and it just sort of pumped all of my energy into just doing other things yeah. Now, whether that whether that could be could be considered running away from your feelings, or whether that um, or whether that 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 could be seen as my method of coping, um, that's the way I that's the way I did it, you know. But you know, as as I said, everybody goes through it differently, and um, I, I mean, I I I know I for one am looking. Can you look? Can you look forward to um, watching somebody's um, somebody's journey? I don't know, but I, for one, am uh, interested to interested to is probably the better way of putting it. Um, interested to see how you get on with your documentaries, just so just so I can understand things as well. You know, I mean, uh, I I certainly found with consequence. Obviously, I um I, I mean I I I couldn't. I, I was I used to talk to you on the phone while you were making it, and um, 
I said, I don't know how you're how you're doing this because I said used to say at the time, I don't know how you're doing this because I don't know what you're going through, you know, and I wish I understood. Yeah. You know. But um I mean so what stage are you at in terms of the uh production for have you got a name for the sequel? Um, no, not as yet. I don't really want to uh, call it Consequence Two, given it's not, yeah. you know, it's not really the set. It's a separate piece, really. Although it is a sequel as such, um, mm. I don't believe that it should have the same name. And I might, I, it's looking like it might be a standalone as well. Like it might mention the first Consequence, may have some flashes to it. Mm. But generally, it will be a standalone documentary because. Yeah. That was my, my first ever project as a filmmaker. Um, my first ever visual piece, anyway. Um, and now I've done I've two and a half years in the industry, and I've got paid work. I've done adverts. I've done dramas on TV. I've, I've done so much more. So visually and narratively and theoretically based, I can make it a million times stronger in whatever way I see fit for it. Yeah. So I want to really make it a standalone piece. Um, it, it's just a matter of, um, as we spoke earlier, um, we was talking about how um, grief is much broader, like whether or not it's for addiction, like everyone suffers grief at one time or another. Mm. It's just of uh, life's little dips. But it's, I, I believe it's vital to remember good times and things. So I don't know how, how deep it will end up. Yeah. It could end up quite open and sort of quite positive looking at life and how, um, yes, grief is a great sadness, but life does continue for people. Yeah. It could be like that, but also, on the other foot, it could be delve even deeper and be emotionally splintering like Consequence was. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I, I definitely agree with you that um, grief is a more, I mean, because we spoke about that, that, that pre, pre-recording, um, I, um, I, I, I put to you that grief is a more, is a, is a broader subject because um, uh, the way, uh, as you put it, you haven't met some you haven't met somebody in your 20 plus years of of life um who hasn't been through it yeah in some form or another mm. i think everyone's experienced that yeah whether whether it whether it's been a parent a grandparent a sibling a friend um a cat a goldfish we've all been through it in some way shape or form yeah so um i suppose it goes into sort of i suppose um at that point we want to sort of go to go go to the point of um why do you why uh, why are you um why do you want to go into another documentary i mean do you do these personal documentaries help you or yes uh, um i find real great relief in telling my story because um i believe everyone's life like you might say oh it's the same stuff or this that or the other blah blah, blah. but generally i think lives are amazing like Socially, I, I really enjoy hearing stories of people's childhoods, of fun trips, of bad days. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's really interesting how someone that you could live next door to for years and years and years have this completely different life story and this whole timeline to their whole um, good times and bad. And I find that really interesting. And as a filmmaker, for now, I'm really focusing on um, making things that are truly outstanding. But as an outside filmmaker, as a professional, I'm really interested in like um, 
drama pieces and real life stories because I think that they are interesting and they are like it's strange to hear it especially if you if you see like the happiest guy walking down the street you don't know what's going on in his home life no he could be the saddest man ever but he puts on this front every day and he makes everyone's lives that little bit cheerier with his disposition Mm -hmm. and it really like that's so interesting and it gets like you probably picked up in my voice like i I I don't even understand it. I just find it really enjoyable and I love watching that sort of thing. So I I'm one of the audience members that sort of like, well hang on a minute, what about mine? What about mine? And I want mine to get seen. Yeah. And I want to tell other people's stories that might not have the chance to. Yeah. Um I mean I um I uh I mean I went to I was in um I was in in Birmingham today, and I, uh, I, I walked past. I walked past a um, a young girl who was, who had a, who was who had like a microphone on the guitar and was just singing, sad songs. Yeah. Now maybe those maybe she just likes those songs. You know, or maybe it's some sort. Of, um, she was doing that for some other. For some other reason, um, I um, I obviously I obviously don't know that don't know, and um, we'll probably we'll probably never know. Uh, but I think uh, I think we've gone I think we've gone uh, into everything that we need to cover. Uh, is there anything any other areas that you think that you feel we need to go into today? Um. No, I think we've covered everything, mate. I think um, to close up, I think the, I think I, I want to give you the opportunity to um, to sort of what would you say to people who um, who are going through maybe some of the things you were going through during the consequence times, or even some of the things that you're going through now. What would you say to those people if they came to you for help? If they came to me, well, I'm just you know, I'm just sort of. If you had to give them, what what advice could you give to people who are going through what you've been through? That's probably the better way of putting it. Um, I think it's always good. So, at first step, you need to know where you are, um, and to know where you stand with a particular situation. Normally, the best time is to have some time to yourself, like go for a walk, go to the beach, go do something you really enjoy that's not distracting such as cinema or anything like that you don't you don't need to listen to music you don't need to watch a film go for a walk have 10 minutes just to let your thoughts run out of you once you've had that 10 minutes talk to someone you trust this can be a sibling a relative it could be a friend or even like uh, you can speak to someone online, like there's um like the Samaritan service, people like that. Yeah. Just open up because you'll be amazed that you might be like, oh, I understand what everything's going on. I just don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. But you might talk about it, and then you realise, well, hang on a minute, I hold a bit of anger towards this person. And once you know what's wrong and what's how you're actually feeling, that's how you can start to work out your issues and work out other people's problems Mm -hmm. do you really need to know where you are the thing is is once you sort of clock onto a situation it's quite easy to sort of go okay i know about it i'm not going to think about it i'm not going to question it and granted sometimes that is needed but i think overall i think you do need to address issues Especially if people are going through addiction, it's be- the sooner the better they get out of it, really. And sometimes they might not have someone else, so you might need to be... Your one choice to open up and to tell someone could actually change their lives. Uh-huh. So, um, yeah, I, um, I, I would echo, I would echo the, your sentiments completely. Um, and uh, I suppose that is a is a suitable enough point to um to get to the to get to get to the the less serious bit of plugging 
because uh, we all like a good we are we all like a good plugging once or twice a week. So um, in terms of plugging for the um, uh, for things and to let people know where they can contact you across the web, um, if they so choose to. So share your social media pages and such if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so you can find me on YouTube. I believe it's just uh, CJ Formwa. Um, one sec. I can totally try and put some of it in the description in the in the, yeah. in the comment it's in it. the description. Uh, so you've got um, CJ Formwa on um, YouTube. On Twitter, it's exactly the same. So it's C W E J A Y F U L M A R. Um, so that's my Twitter, my YouTube. You can find me on pretty much any social network you can imagine. I'll probably be on there. Mm-hmm. Chances are it's got my face splashed on it. Yep. Um, so just check it out. And if, if you've got a question or you want to talk, just drop me an email or drop me a, a tweet, and I'm happy to talk to anyone. Yeah. Okay, well, um, uh, uh, thanks for coming on the um, on the chat room today. Um Thank- Obviously, you got you guys watching. Know where you can find me. Um, the usual places: um, Twitter at Tom Williams nineteen ninety. Obviously, you're already on my YouTube page. Um, and obviously, check check the description below for a, a link to um, the documentary Consequence. Um, just so you can know, so you can have a bit of a um, bit of a basis on what 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 I'm going what we're going on about and. Um, you know why? Why I, for one, am uh, interested to see the the follow up piece. Um, so this has been another Tom's chat room. You guys uh, make your make your way to the exit in an orderly fashion, um, and uh, feel free to um, have a look at the flower displays outside. This has been Tom's chat room. You guys are quite welcome. Goodbye. <laughs>